I have always liked art. I liked drawing when I was a little kid. I, I liked oil painting. I, I went to, you know, a little grade school and high school, art, different state contests and stuff, and I liked cartooning. I, I started playing guitar in third grade. I, it didn't matter what it was. My, my first couple of years at the university, uh, I was a studio art major, and one of the proudest moments of those uh, first two years was when I got a one of a piece of my artwork displayed in the gallery during this junior senior art show. I also like science. I was one of those children that grew up during the 60s and 70s and during the space race, and as uh, as man took their first steps on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I put together models of spaceships and things like that. I, I've always liked science. Even when I was in college, I, I didn't go into science. Of course, I never became a scientist. But uh, one of the proudest moments of my last two years in college, my junior and senior years, was being able to help set up an astronomy class, being a teaching assistant or a lab assistant, and helping students with their work. I, I focused on, um, on the physical sciences, the uh, geology and paleontology, and my favorite astronomy. And of course, the passion that sent me to school in the first place, the one that has never left, is my faith. So I started uh, to study to be a minister. That was, that was the driving passion. Didn't go to school for anything else but to study to be a pastor. And my, my major were in the field of philosophy and religion. It's been a fascinating life. I, um, I've now put in, well, I'm just starting my 39th year as a pastor and I've had four or five years in there where I did some pulpit supply and interim work and 20 years of teaching college, uh, college philosophy. <laughs> Never would have imagined when I was a, a kid growing up that that's the direction my life would take but I can't imagine a, a life that didn't take that direction now. Uh, it seems that my life has been a little bit eclectic. I, I bring the point up just simply because though I love art and though I love um, science and though I'm dedicated to my faith, 
science and the humani or yeah, science and the humanities and theology and the arts, they don't all look at life quite the same way. They they value different things. They um, if you will take this as an example, they they each accept different windows of knowledge. The science uses the scientific method. They te make a hypothesis. They test the hypothesis. They're, they're never really sure if they're right. I mean, 100% sure. But they have quite a bit of certitude that they're on the right, tr right track and getting closer with every revelation. Um, faith, on the other hand, is uh, not exactly the cup of tea for a lot of science. And I've noticed a gulf between, I mean, a big gulf that seems to be growing between science and between faith. And it wasn't always that way. I mean, Galileo had, was, was a person of faith and, um, you know, most of the credit or a big portion of the craters on the moon are named after people of faith. Now, it bothers me when people of science write off the possibility of anything that can't be measured being real. I mean, I can understand the idea that it, maybe it's real, maybe it's not real, you can't prove it is, you can't prove it's not, but to just quickly write off anything, that bothers me. Because it seems like a, a search for knowledge has kind of degenerated into a search for backing up my preconceived ideas. But I really doubt if I'm speaking to a lot of people of science today. This is a, a midweek devotion from the church that I am a part of, and I think probably I'm speaking more to people of faith. So I, I want to say that it bothers me even more when people of faith jettison science, and they come up with some like pseudoscience or something that just doesn't hold the test, or they, they kind of poo-poo science as if it does not teach much or, or there's not a real search for truth when a lot of the scientific principles are so solid and have so much evidence behind them and I think sometimes the reason that we kind of ignore them or look for somebody that can speak eloquently and talk our way out of believing in them is because it's hard for us to understand them sometimes I mean Physics can be a pretty tough, pretty tough discipline. And so if we can't understand it, and if we can't prove it wrong, and if it seems like it threatens us, and, and actually, most of the time, an honest search of, for truth is going to threaten us because there aren't many of us that really have the answer to all truth. And when we start going out there looking for it, we're gonna find it out of our box. I'm just having a good old time today playing in my son's garden. It's just, I always have fun out here. I, this is the point where I usually say a few days from now, we'll be back together worshiping again, but we won't because I'm up here in Michigan. I was up in Michigan last week. I'm going to be a Michigan part of next week. So I'm up here playing around at my son's house, but it won't be long before I'm back home and we can worship together again. But in the meantime, May God bless you, and may God guide you, and may God help you to become a deep thinker and a person of deep faith.